Did you know 37% of 18 to 34 year olds reported that they made a purchase right on directly through a social media platform like Snapchat or TikTok or Instagram? Now this is the Generation Z millennial generation. And those of you out there that are older are probably saying, oh, that's for the younger people. But remember, as marketers and business owners, these younger people are getting older every single day. Their habits are changing slightly, but where they grew up and what they learned uh, as they're growing up carries on through adulthood. And social commerce, which is what we're going to be talking about today, is going to follow them as they age up. They're going to continue to make purchases directly through these platforms because it's easy. They don't have to click off. They don't have to leave Facebook or Instagram or TikTok to make a purchase. So this 37% of people is going to increase every single year. So it's very important that your brand, if you're selling a product to the millennial generation, to the Generation Z generation, or you want to sell products to them in the future as they get older, that you look to social commerce, which I'll explain in a moment, as a huge opportunity for your brand growth. It's super easy to set up because in most cases, it taps directly into your Shopify or your big commerce. You can simply upload your product catalog and boom, it's on Facebook or it's on Instagram or it's on TikTok. And the best part is it's free. These platforms currently don't charge any commission for the sales made through there because the sales are still made through Shopify. It's still, it's still sort of processed through uh, your original platform in most cases. Now that might change in the future, but right now it's free. So you upload your product catalog to say Instagram, your pricing, your product images, your descriptions, everything is on your Instagram now and people can shop your actual Instagram feed because you tag a product, which is in a, in a photo, and they can click it and they can buy it right there. It's seamless, it's easy, it's free. There's no reason why you and your team shouldn't be getting your products on these social media platforms. Hey everyone, I'm John Timmerman. Thank you for watching uh, our latest episode. Today we're gonna be talking about social commerce. Social commerce is quite simply e-commerce done on social media. So if you're looking at digital media and you're an e-commerce brand, you have a few different buckets of places that you sell things. You sell things on your website. This is commonly known as e-commerce. You sell things maybe on Amazon or Walmart.com uh, uh, if you're in the United States or Mercado Livre if you're in Brazil. And uh, this is typically known as marketplace commerce, right? This is These are marketplaces. These are other platforms that uh, people go to to shop and you can put your products there. It works the same as if you sold your products through a physical Target store or Walmart, except it's digital, right? So these are marketplaces. And now emerging ever so quickly is social commerce. And that are, is platforms like Instagram and TikTok and Snapchat, even uh, Twitter is coming out with Twitter shops. And it's a, it's a way that people can scroll right through the social media content and news feeds or, or feeds uh, that th they view every day, all day long anyways, and when they see something they like, maybe they see a product, uh, a brand that's promoting a new product that they're launching, or it's an influencer who says, I love these sunglasses. That photo, that video, that piece of content can be tagged with a product. The price is right there. The description is right there on TikTok or right there on Instagram. And if they like it, they can click buy right there. Whereas previously, you had to include a link or you had to say, click the link in my bio to, to purchase a product in Instagram, right? We all went through that as marketers. Well, now they don't have to do that anymore. They don't have to actually go to the website to make a purchase. You, they can make the purchase right there and they can continue scrolling and look at other products or look at other uh, news that they're interested in on that social media platform. So the point is, is it's seamless. It's so important for you to understand how easy it is for you to set up as a business. No foul uh, and no risk to you or your team. Uh, so if you sell a product, getting into social commerce is, is highly, highly valuable. It's only going to go up. It's only going to continue to grow as the Generation Z and millennial demographics age up. They're going to continue to adopt more of these convenience type uh, ways of making purchases. And social commerce makes it very, very 
easy. Now, there's a couple of points I want to make. If you're an old school marketer, it was all about SEO and all about PPC and getting traffic to your website. Uh, and that was the thing, right? Funnel into the website. Well, the expansion of marketplace commerce and social commerce is changing the landscape. So if you're an old school marketer and you've been for the past 20 years trying to drive traffic to your website for e-commerce, that is not the case anymore. You basically need to stop doing that because you're taking away the convenience factor, which could lead to millions of dollars for your business. Instead, look at them like three separate areas, just like you look at retail as a separate area. Aside from overall brand marketing, retail has its own way of merchandising and marketing and shopper marketing and things like that, right? That's sort of separate from somebody making a purchase on your website. Social commerce should be looked at as separate. Use your social media to create value, to create buzz, to get people excited about your brand and the lifestyle they can have with your brand. And then when appropriate, you can tag a product that they can purchase right there. There's no need to drive them to your website. But as you adopt this strategy of siloing social media uh, from, from your e-commerce, by the way, let me make a distinction. I'm not saying separate them completely. You're still going to market your brand. You want them to understand and focus on what your brand value is. But then from there, they should be able to de decide, they being the consumer, should be able to decide where they want to go and purchase your product. The days of trying to force them to go somewhere is sort of gone because everything is democratized. The internet has democratized everything. So you might as well lean into social commerce, create content, tag your products. Uh, uh, the best part is you don't have to update things multiple times because the feed usually comes from your website. So if you have a Shopify site, let's use Shopify because it's the best platform for all of you out there selling a product for the most part um, because it integrates with everything. It has uh, dynamic capabilities. It's flexible. It's scalable. So if you have a Shopify store, you have all your products listed in Shopify, that will integrate directly into, let's say, Instagram and, and, and Facebook uh, and WhatsApp for that matter because they're all meta companies, right? They're all under the meta uh, uh, umbrella. So they all share similar capabilities. So you upload your catalog or you integrate it directly into WhatsApp, Instagram, or Facebook, and then boom, your product feed appears on your profile uh, in different areas, depending on if it's Facebook, Instagram, or WhatsApp. And people can go directly to shop that, there if they go to your profile, but you can also tag posts with those products. So now there is this library of products in your social media channel that you can tag, you can recommend to people, you can forward to people that DM you, uh, that comment. So you can sort of get them to make those purchases right there but it updates dynamically because it's coming from your Shopify site. So you update your Shopify site and it updates the products over on your social media channel. That's the best part. So if you were just freaking out because you're like, God damn, I got to think of one more thing, one more thing to update my 50 products. You don't, you don't, you have to update it in one place. In most cases, if you're using Shopify uh, or in most cases, big commerce, um, if you're using anything else for e-commerce, then no promises because it might not integrate directly. You might have to do it more manually. So, but that's still not even that hard because you could, you know, you, you could update something on your website, let's say Magento or um, Salesforce Commerce Cloud or something like that. You update it there and then you could export your product list complete with pricing and pictures and descriptions and everything and then import it into the social media channel. So there is an extra step. It's still not that difficult. So that's social commerce. And that's the, that's the same thing we have gone through and still in, in some old school industries are going through with marketplaces. Marketplaces are one more thing. Amazon is one more thing I have to pay attention to. But there's now software platforms out there that allow you to manage all of your product inventory and all of your product listings in sort of one dashboard. So you can update your Shopify, you can update your Amazon, um, and by default of updating your Shopify, you can update your social commerce, right? Very important for all of you out there. If you are a consumer goods 
uh, marketer or founder or grower of some sort, social commerce is where you want to pay attention to. You've probably already built out or you're thinking about building out your e-commerce in, in an amazing way to drive website sales. Uh, you're probably already thinking about Amazon or Walmart if you haven't already uh, because there's so many customers that are going there first before they even go to Google to shop for a product. product. They're going to Amazon to search. So if you, if you don't have a brand that's bigger than Amazon, you should probably be on it. I say that because only the Nikes of the world, which coincidentally has pulled their products from Amazon, Nike has a, I don't want to say a bigger brand than Amazon, but they have a bigger brand in the sneaker space than Amazon. So they don't need to be on Amazon. If somebody goes to Amazon looking for Nikes and they don't find it, they're going to go off to the internet, Google, and find those Nikes and make the purchase there. But most of us are not Nike, so we should probably think about being on Amazon. And social commerce is just like Amazon. It has such a large audience. People go to TikTok to be entertained, to get their news, to buy things. They go to Instagram. So they're already there. They're already in that mindset of finding new things. So you might as well allow them to see your products and decide if they want to make a purchase based on your content. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I talk in my, in my shows about marketing, about business, uh, about emerging tech, specifically in the AR and VR space. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe, uh, leave a comment. I love to read uh, your thoughts about these shows and uh, if I can improve them in any way, please let me know. Until next time, have an amazing day.